Yeah. You ready? <laughs> hey! Let's go! Bet! Yo, once again I'm back around. Uh, Rush it back in style. Uh, haters reconcile. Uh, I'm so black and proud. First class tickets now. Uh, feet all in the eye. Uh, everybody looking down. Everybody get red when you drown, huh? In today's episode of my powerlifting journey vlog, I want to cover five reasons why you're probably not getting stronger. I think one of the simple ones to cover first is many people simply don't track their workouts. You know, using a workout book, logging each and every single weight and rep that you're going through in the gym helps a lot in determining actually whether or not you're getting stronger or whether you can try and improve workout to workout. Example being, if you're trying to remember how many reps you got on say the 30 kilo dumbbells, rather than actually knowing, you don't know whether you need to beat it by one rep or whether you might be able to go up a little bit or if you're choosing potentially the right weight for that week. So yeah, first and foremost, track your workouts. The next tip on this journey of helping you get stronger or find the reasons why you might not be getting stronger is to consider some ideas of simple periodization. So periodization is where you essentially break up parts of your programming into days, weeks, months, and even years. So if you look at Olympic athletes, for example, they will break things into the Olympic cycle. So every four years they're training in a certain way to be able to peak for a competition. Now in the gym, you don't have to necessarily get that complicated, but what you can do is go through periods of what we describe as high volume. So it would be lots of work and different exercises with lower intensity. So if you have lots of work to do, you can't necessarily lift you know, your one rep max multiple times all the time and not feel like you're about to die. And then you go through periods of lower volume and higher intensity, so more weight on the bar. And this undulating effect you can take through uh, programming for quite some time. My first suggestion is if you're trying to gain um, strength overall, you probably want to spend reasonable periods of time at roughly lower intensities or lower-ish weight on the bar, but remain in higher volume phases. So maybe two to three phases that are probably a bit more like bodybuilding, and then move into more specific phases for short periods where intensity is high, the weight is heavy, and your volume is relatively low you may even start to become quite specific with some of the movements and things that you'll be doing. So think about that. Think about the way that you're programming and consider options of times of higher volume and lower intensity or weight on the bar, but then also times where weight is priority, where volume is inevitably going to drop slightly. Oh. It's, um, it's a little bit of a snack lunch. Yeah, I woke up late this morning. So um, I'm now gonna have my favorite uh, Arla protein yogurt, some light baby bells, and then um, two brioche buns with blackcurrant jam in them because we had a barbecue and we have lots of them to get through. So I'm hungry. I have some online work and things to get on with, got some clients to check in with, and I'm also trying to update my spreadsheets and make them look a little bit sexier, so I'm gonna record a video for that. Then we are going to go to the gym and hit up the first session of the week, which I'm not, not particularly looking forward to because it is super high reps again. And then we'll get more into these tips. So we've done two, we've got three more to go. Me up. I'm putting it down, you picking it up. Checking the models, they want us to go to college just so we can be stuck. Go to school to make a living, or teach yourself to make a fortune. Common sense, welcome to the apocalypse. I'm one of the horsemen. I don't need your endorsement, I don't need reinforcement. Giving you your last warning, cause I'm at my prime. Yeah. I'm at my. I'm at my prime. Whoa. It's a great black man. That was, uh, that was a mildly horrific uh, training session. Um, nine 
nine reps on deadlifts at 172 and a half is, uh, is not very fun. But it does remind me that one way of getting stronger is adding little weights, you know, not forgetting the 1.25s and the 2.5s that you can add to the bar. Ultimately, over time, they will add up. I see so many guys going into the gym doing, you know, jumping onto their like maximum lifts, you know, not thinking about the accumulation of adding small amounts each and every time and allowing your body to adapt in between rather than just jumping to the maximum weight you can possibly do. You should probably consider or at least use the 1.25s and 2.5s to slowly accumulate weight and it'll add up over a long pe over a period of time to your benefit yeah i think it made sense true that yeah. anything to add you've been on the blog for a little while have you no why shy <laughs> You're not shy. <laughs> um, just had these actually, they were in my cupboard and I decided just to steal them, but oven baked Walker's crisps, 50% less fat, sea, uh, sea solid, lovely, 100 calories for a pack, Abs absolutely brilliant. Sorry that was kind of off vlog, but yeah, they were very good. Hunger, hunger. was planning on going outside to film this but I think uh, it's raining pretty hard outside so I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But either way, um, the next point that I wanted to get to was actually looking at weak points. So sometimes during lifts like bench press and squat and deadlift and you know the, the general kind of KPI exercises, sometimes you might have weak points within those lifts. So example might be a uh, bench press where you struggle to lock out so then you might want to start incorporating exercises like close grip bench press, which might train the triceps a bit more, which might help the overall lockout of the lift. The second one would be um, deadlifts, for example. Some people struggle in a conventional pool to pull off the floor. So by um, breaking down the lift into something like a deficit deadlift, you might then be able to improve your ability to pull off the floor. So this is one way you can try and accelerate your gains in terms of strength, is by sort of breaking down lifts and thinking about areas where you might be weaker and where you can probably improve upon and then put that within the programming to, well, help things. <laughs> Now, I did have uh, slightly outrageous plans for this next section, which involved me in the bath, you know, nice foamy picture, bath, relaxing, enjoying myself. Hey, what's wrong? I drew my own bath, but I did it wrong. The water's tepid, the salt didn't dissolve, and it's now lodged places. <laughs> and the scents I use don't complement each other. Eucalyptus and chamomile? Oh. But, uh, alas, I don't think I can be bothered wasting all that water <laughs> on a bath. But nonetheless, that does relate into our last topic within the idea of um, why or reasons why you might not be getting stronger. And one of those is the idea of rest and recovery. So most people go to the gym and they smash it and they just keep going. They just keep going, keep going, keep going. And they don't actually consider that maybe taking one step back will help you take two steps forwards. So what I mean by that is potentially halving the amount of um, load that you've been doing. So if you're doing four sets on bench press, maybe this time you do two sets. And you also maybe reduce your total amount of weight on the bar by anywhere between 20 and 50%. So that what you're allowing your body to do is to recover from the heavy and hard training that you've been doing for the past three to four weeks of a phase. It also resets you psychologically, it helps any aches and soreness, all sort of relax and things. And it also gives you time to do other stuff than weight training. So that kind of finalizes and finishes off at the last part of this, why you're probably not getting stronger. I hope these have been helpful. If they have been, hit that like button, subscribe to me on YouTube. And if you have ever any questions at all, pop them down in the comments section below. And I'll see you in the next video. Done.